44 News at 9. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Fox 44 News at 9. I'm Hannah Hoover. Adam and MG have the night off. On January 1st, dozens of new laws will take effect in Texas. The Texas legislature passed more than 800 laws this year. Most of them took effect in September, but there's some notable changes you should know about coming in the new year. Our Ryan Chandler brings us some of the highlights from Austin. One of the most controversial bills of 2023 will bring big changes to college campuses in the new year. Senate Bill 17 bans universities from establishing or keeping their offices of diversity, equity and inclusion or DEI. Diversity, equity and inclusion, we call it division, inequity and indoctrination. Those offices have become commonplace in Texas universities like UT, Texas Tech, A&M and more as a resource for underrepresented students. The bill also bans universities from requiring training programs aimed at educating employees about race, gender, or sexual orientation. The policies, the strategies, the structure that we have in place with DEI today is not working. But if we're doing this in order to increase diversity, why not bring us into the tent in order to get it done? Next, businesses will see some big changes. In 2024, the franchise tax exemption will double. Today, companies can exempt 1.2 million. That's going up to 2.5 million. We know this is the biggest property tax cut in American history. We think it's in the world's history. Lastly, new rules to protect kids from e-cigarettes. In the new year, you may see fewer colorful displays behind the gas station counter because of a new law aimed at stopping e-cig vendors from tailoring their products to minors. The law bans the sale of e-cigarette containers that depict cartoonish or fictional characters. It also bans any container resembling food, like candy or juice. Retailers who do sell those products will be subject to fines. Those are just some of the highlights from Austin. I'm Ryan Chandler. San Antonio investigators hope surveillance video will lead to answers in the killings of an 18 year old pregnant woman who disappeared before Christmas with her boyfriend. Police want the public to watch this video to help identify two people. Investigators have not named a possible motive or suspects in the deaths of Savannah Nicole Soto and Matthew Guerrera. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office ruled both deaths homicides caused by gunshot wounds to the head. The couple were found Tuesday in Guerrero's car outside a San Antonio apartment complex. In the crime report, a busy night in Colleen for police officers who are now investigating three shootings that may be connected. They found the first gunshot victim in the 1100 block of Culp just before two this morning after getting calls about shootings in the area. An ambulance took him to Baylor Scott and White where he is in critical condition. Soon after, officers found a second person with non-life threatening gunshot wounds a block away. Then officers learned of a third gunshot victim connected to the Culp incident. He went to the hospital and his condition has stabilized. At this time, police believe two of the men tried to burglarize or steal a vehicle and that triggered the shooting. The Lampasas County Sheriff's Office has wrapped up a months long narcotics trafficking operation with several arrests. Investigators kept an eye on a house in the 100 block of Elm Street in Lamita for several months. On Thursday, they served a warrant on the house and arrested four people, Cindy Odom, Timothy Cox, Thomas Simmons and Eric B.J. Wilson. They face several felony drug possession charges. The sheriff's office says the house has been the subject of drug investigations in the past and they hope these arrests will put a stop to the problem. 2023 has been a big year in the Central Texas court system. Cicely Aguilar was sentenced in Vanessa Guillen's case. We've also seen a sentence in Marvin Guy's trial. However, one case that sticks out from this year is the Cedric Marks trial. Fox 44's Earl Sotomayor has a recap. After four years, Cedric Marks went to trial in April in the deaths of his ex-girlfriend Jenna Scott and her friend Michael Swearingen. Scott and Swearingen were both reported missing from Temple on January 4, 2019. Five days later, their bodies were found in Oklahoma. Marks' then-girlfriend and accomplice, Maya Maxwell, testified in court how Marks took Scott and Swearingen to separate rooms at a home in Colleen. Maxwell explained how she watched Marks enter each room and walked out to find Scott and Swearingen dead. Marx's wife, Janelle McDonough, allowed him and Maxwell to stay at her home in Michigan in this time period until he was arrested. Marx was charged with capital murder after being extradited back to Bell County and claimed he was innocent. I can only imagine what's going on with their family and I am 
so sorry for their losses, but I did not and had nothing to do with this. Marks chose to represent himself, cross-examining every witness in court. He was taken in and out of the court multiple times for outbursts and lashing out at the judge. In the end, Marks was found guilty. What we were waiting for was the thunder that was given today. Within a short period of time, this jury reaching the decision that they did. In the sentencing portion, Mark asked the jury to give him the death sentence, and the jury delivered. Michael Swearingen's mother, Deborah Harrison, can rest knowing her son's killer is paying for his crimes. I don't forgive the act of murder that he did, and the pain that he inflicted on my baby. But, but, I forgive him because I need to be forgiven so I can go to heaven. Earl Stoudemire, Fox 24 News. A fundraiser is being held for the family devastated by a house explosion on Christmas Eve in Rogers. St. Matthew Catholic Church is holding a breakfast fundraiser for the family of Manuela Carrillo, who died in the explosion. It'll be on Sunday, New Year's Eve, starting at 8 in the morning at the parish hall. The proceeds will go to Carrillo's funeral and hospital cost. Tonight, Central Texans are finalizing their New Year's Eve plans, but there is an old law you might want to keep in mind. Mercedes Hernandez explains from Austin. Open signs at Texas liquor stores will go dark this weekend because of established laws, one dating back to the Prohibition era. It's between me and the grocery store. The Texas Liquor Control Act says liquor stores can't be open on Sundays or on major holidays like Christmas and New Year's Day. Because of that, all stores will be closed starting Saturday night through Tuesday morning. Yeah, I was unaware, but I'm glad I'm here today to buy it. But uh, yeah, I mean, New Year's must be a big day for people to buy liquor, and that's not a great day to be closed. Arun Chatterjee says he didn't know about the long closure and that he's glad to get his shopping done in time. He says it should be up to business owners to decide whether or not to be open. You know, if the liquor store owner wants to be open, wants the business, it's great. And if they'd rather stay at home and sleep, that's great too. So, Governor Abbott signed a bill into law back in 2021 that says Texans can now buy beer and wine on Sundays. But the hard stuff has to stay on the shelves. Thankfully, I ran into you because I do need to do a little more shopping. This was for friends, but I need to do a little bit of shopping uh, before New Year's. In Austin. Mercedes Hernandez. The city of Waco is getting ready for New Year's Eve by promoting its safe ride home. To fight against drunk driving, the city's transit system is offering free rides to and from destinations on New Year's Eve. The service is from 6 p.m. until 3 a.m. on New Year's Day. Tow King will also tow your vehicle home for you. And to schedule a ride, call 254-750-1620. Group bookings are also available. The service is sponsored by Benny King Company, Subway, and Chewy's. TxDOT wants to start off the new year by making walking along one street in Temple a little safer. Construction crews will start work on a new sidewalk Tuesday along Central Avenue. It will go from South 6th Street to South 12th Street. Weather permitting, the project will be complete by next summer. There will be various lane closures throughout the project, and the project is projected to cost about $237,000. Well, thank you notes may feel old school, but I caught up with an etiquette expert this week to hear why everyone should be sending those thank you notes after Christmas. Thank you notes really distinguish, um, I, to me, they distinguish how you feel about that person. You need to value any and all gifts, but to send a thank you note is to go beyond just saying thank you. Etiquette expert Misty Harris says there is a timestamp on sending thank you notes. So traditionally, Three days is, you know, you get the gift three days later, you need to be sending out the thank you card. That was back in the older days when people weren't stuck in traffic or, you know, they didn't have to drive children. The times have changed, so I myself say a week. Thank you notes are not limited to a season. The same seven-day time period applies for birthdays, weddings, and baby showers. Harris recommends purchasing a set of personalized thank you cards to use all year long. It doesn't have to be a seasonal Christmas thank you card. Just the fact that you sent it. So where does the practice of sending thank you notes originate? Historically, you can look to the Chinese and the Egyptians because when they had deliveries uh, of things, they would send a small papyrus, a small thank you saying, we have received this. What once served as a confirmation of delivery now serves as a form of gratitude. When asked about New Year's resolutions, Misty emphasized the importance of empathy. Be empathetic when you're out um, and tell people thank you. 
verbally tell them thank you. Elaborate on it. 